Where are the deals? How to find deals in this market? How to find real estate deals, cheap condos, cheap real estate in this 2020, summer 2020 Toronto real estate condo market. Okay, friends, UOC Kaplan here, your friendly Toronto realtor. <laughs> Today we're gonna to talk about how to find deals in this market. So every time, every time that there's something going on, whether it was 2008, if you remember, even in the 90s, other times, every time there's a rattle in the market, and now there's we have the biggest rattle we've seen maybe in entire lives. People are looking for deals. Now the first knee-jerk reaction is, oh, everything's gonna crash, blah, blah, blah. And that's normal, that's typical, and a lot of the people that are watching um, YouTubes or the news, of course, are getting into the fear narrative. The world's gonna end, everything's gonna be really bad. It's not gonna end, everything's gonna be fine. It's a perspective. You gotta take the right perspective. Now, if you wanna take the perspective, if you wanna take the perspective everything's uh, bad, you're probably gonna see all that. But if you're gonna take the perspective of there's opportunities, you're probably gonna start seeing opportunities because that's what you're looking for. So, I take the perspective of opportunities because that's the kind of person I am, and that's why you're here. So, where are the opportunities right now? Well. You gotta remember a few things. Um, first of all, we've had a phenomenal, maybe uber phenomenal success, uh, economic success. I'm not gonna judge it. I'm just gonna say what it is. And stock markets all time high, real estate all time high, metals, everything. Everything is up, up, up. Now, why would anything be more today than it was yesterday? Why would it be more tomorrow because it, it, what is today? Well, the answer is expectation, okay? It's all psychology. If everyone is expecting that the market's gonna go up, then people are gonna say, okay, tomorrow's gonna go up, I better buy today. And if I didn't buy today, for whatever reason, tomorrow I expect it to be a little more, and that's how it goes. And if everyone believes in that tomorrow the market's gonna be less, then they're gonna sit on their hands, not gonna do anything and wait for price discounts. I've been waiting to see retailers discounting, heavy, heavy discounting on on say clothing and shoes and you know summer items, winter items, people not supposed to spend, but I don't see a lot of deals. I haven't seen Christmas in July deals. I haven't seen uh, Black Friday, anything like that. And when you look at those, they're not real discounts. You know, you go to Best Buy, it's like they give you a 10% discount. That's like the usual stuff that they post every week. There's nothing, nothing happening. So you gotta think to yourself, why is that? That is because there's an expectation. So people are expecting, retailers are expecting, manufacturers are expecting. And the other thing is, if you have nothing to do with your money and you have money, and you maybe think there's gonna be inflation, means your money's gonna be worth less and less. The value of your money, the psychological value of your money is, is compressing. Then you're gonna buy something, you're gonna exchange that money for something that could retain the value, store of value. And that's the entire story of real estate, that's the entire story of gold. It, at some points, the entire story of, of uh, monetary currency, you know, dollar, coin, coins, whatever, government or Fed issued coin or World Bank issued, all these coins are issued by large bodies. Of course, there's smaller coins, renegade coins, like the crypto coins, that's a whole other story. But we're focusing on real estate. So the reason real estate is going up is because people are expecting things to be in a certain way. And they're expecting that people are going to need homes. Okay? Now, food prices have gone up. If you go any, anywhere you go, food prices have price gone up 10, 20% last few months. And it just keeps going. Why is that? You can't get a sandwich in this time for less than $9. Okay? Why is that? Because the cost of everything has gone up. So everything is going up. That means that cost of everything is going to go up and real estate has to stay in line just like everything else. More than that, real estate is a store of value. That means that if you need somewhere to park your wealth, you convert it from dollar to real estate, you buy real estate, and then you live in it or you rent it out or you just sit on it like they... I've, like they do some places in the world, you know, they don't necessarily want to rent the real estate or break even. They don't care. They just have money 
and they need to park it somewhere, and they can park it at the bank for one or two percent, or they can buy a mutual fund, and again, maybe a couple percent, or they can buy real estate and try to do better. A lot of people believe in real estate because just one of the oldest things in the book, people need a place to live. People need food, basic, basic needs, Maslow's Pyramid. So if, if you adhere, if you provide service that adhere to the very basic needs, you're usually okay, okay? Because it doesn't matter what the situation is, you still need food, you still need a bed, you still need shelter, clothes, all the basic things. Uh, you, you, you cannot directly invest, you know, you need a doctor too, but you can't really invest in a doctor. You can buy stocks for pharmas, pharmas or biomed or whatever, but that's, that's arm length, that, that's not direct. When you buy real estate, you own it, you control it, you know what you pay for it, you know your expenses, you know what rent you're going to get more or less, okay? But there are deals, and that's the second part of this video that we're going to get into right now, and that's how to find these deals. So how do you find deals in the market refuses to go down? <laughs> okay, well, like everything in life, there's always something else. There's always uh, something you can find. And to me, I'm a local guy, you know, I, I, I stay kind of in my area, obviously not every day, but I, I stay in my area. I love that area. I study my area. That's where I live. Once in a while, you get into a situation where someone has to sell and they're like, I'm just going to sell it. I made so much money on this unit. or oh, I don't use it anymore. I want to sell it quickly. Oh, I don't really care for five, ten, or twenty thousand dollars. You know, I already made two hundred thousand on this thing, or thirty thousand on the whatever it is, and I just need to sell it. I want to do something else with the money. Maybe there's another opportunity. Maybe I need to pay. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> These are the opportunities, and they exist in two places. They exist in the open market through the MLS. If you're looking now at uh, one bedroom unit, there's the Thompson Residences right there, six twenty nine King. Some really good deals. Now you can tell me, Yossi, you know, these units were selling for less than 300000 when it came to market, but obviously inflation happened, life happened, time happened. But now they're going for in the 500 Still a reasonable price, in my opinion, for a good location, good quality building, some nice services, and everything you want from the city around. <clears throat> Are they going to drop back to 400 I don't think so. They're going to drop back to 300 I don't think so. Um, most of the people buying these units, you know, they're established, they pass the test, they pay the condo fees, the mortgage. Over 95% of these are rented anyways because the vacancy in Toronto has not dropped by that much. We probably added a bunch of uh, Airbnbs in, but in a city of 8 million or whatever, how many millions we have here? Even if you had 1,000, it's 2,000, 10,000 units still a drop in the ocean. <clears throat> now, winter comes, <clears throat> even Labor Day comes, and people going back to school, if there is school, work, if there is work, but eventually people are gonna have to go to work, people have to go to school, people have to send their kids to school, and life will force itself on any situation, regardless what the situation is, because we just gotta do it. Now, mind you, there's still a lot of public, there's the driver in there, and all the support system for the DTC, that's, billions of dollars a year of salaries and income. And there's still a huge part of the population is working, have not stopped working, probably two thirds. They haven't really been affected. They still need a place to live, they still need to work. If they work from home, they maybe need more space because if you live in a one bedroom and just live there, that's great. But now if you gotta put an office in your 500 square feet, that's a problem. So maybe you need a larger space, maybe a one plus den or a two bedroom so you can work from home, uh, if that's what you're after. And <clears throat> people still need a place to live. So on the MLS, and if you want me to tell you what's a good deal, what's not, because it's not only about the price, it's the building, it's the unit, it's the floor plan, it's the exposure, it's uh, some buildings have higher costs per foot on the condo fee, some are lower. Some have been recently renovated, so you can expect the cost to be stable, and some need some work, so that means that they either gotta hit the reserve fund or raise the condo fees to get some, you know, some buildings get into 30, 40, 50 years old in the city. So the elevator breaks, now it's under contract, it's under warranty, but things happen. So all these come together, and the thing that separates humans from 
the computer is that we can put things together that computers just cannot. Maybe one day, but still a bit of time. Maybe a computer can see a trend, but a human can just look and say yes or no very, very quickly. You know how it is. You look at a car, you go, oh, great car. You look at a, anything, you go, this is good, this is not good. You can look at a piece of food and say if it's going to be tasty or it's raw. Same thing with real estate. Is it going to be a good investment or not? Your gut feel <coughs> is actually a summary of sorts of everything that you know already. <coughs> and your brain just gives you the answer very, very quickly. Then you can think about it. How, how do I know this? Oh, yeah. So <coughs> there's a lot of opportunities. And the second, uh, of course, is in the assignment. So if you were looking at assignments, there's a lot of assignments coming on the market now that were sold three and four years ago. Guess what? Three or four years ago, the price was way lower than what it is today. So if they pay for the assignment $700 or $800 a foot, and they're selling this brand new assignment for $1,000 a foot or $950 a foot, where everything around you, pre-construction uh, pre itself for 13 and 14 a foot, you're literally saving 30% or 40% off what you would pay for if you're buying new. Now, obviously, assignment, you mean you got to close on it, you got to put the tenant in it. <coughs> um, you can't play that game of buy, put your 15% and flip it. But if you're going to get a $100,000 discount a unit or $200,000 discount a unit, do you really care if the rent is $100 more, less or more? Do you really care if the rent is $500 less or more or less if your margin of what you bought right now comparing to the market you save $300,000. So what's 200 a month? What's 500 a month over three years? Who cares? And that's the logic of how people work it. They go, this is a great opportunity right now. I can put my kid to live there while they get their job or go to university or whatever they do. They have a baby <coughs> doing their life stuff. At the same time, or put a tenant in, and it's a sit on our unit because my expectation, and that's back to the beginning of the video, the expectation is that the market's going to do well. Okay? So assignments. Now, there's no board for assignments. I have some links for assignments. If you want to put a comment here, I'll send it to you. I'll post it for you. Or if you email me something specific, I'll tell you what's available. I get a lot of them come over my desk every day. And those come and go quickly because these good deals, you know, you find yourself a one plus den downtown King West in the 600s from assignment. It's really, really good. <clears throat> because if you look at what you would pay for it, if you were to buy it from a developer right now, you pay eight something, not six something. Okay. That's the logic. So on MLS, you can find deals, but once again, it's Lots of listings, so you need to know which is which. That's where the human, the real estate agent will help you, myself or someone else. And the same with assignment, even more complicated because you don't maybe don't know the building or the history of the builder or what the unit is, or you don't realize it looks really good on paper, but you got to see, is it actually a good unit once you're in the building, or is it facing the alleyway where they're going to get huge construction next year? That's where the human comes into place. That's why you got to pick up the phone and call or send an email and just get in touch with another person. And that's what I do. So somebody comes to me and they say, you know, Yossi, I have, I want to invest. I want a one bedroom, two bedroom, penthouse, townhome. Okay. <clears throat> what, when, when do you want to have it? What are you going to do with it? How much money you want to spend on it? And what area? More or less, that's what I need to know. <clears throat> we have the conversation. My kid's going to finish school in a year, so I'm looking for something between now and next year. <coughs> they're going to live here, they're going to live there. Their aunt's living over there, so we want to be next to the DVP, or we want to be downtown, or whatever it is. Everyone's different. And then we're going to start looking down within that geography, within these financial constraints. What can we find for that budget? Can we get closer to what they want? Can we get more than what they want? Or maybe the budget's not enough. You need to increase the budget, move areas. All these things start to happen. And then you start getting the listings from me. I'll text them to you or email them to you. If I find something good, I'll even call you. Say, yo, find a really good one. I think you should take a look at it. 
and that's where you come into action and you start to look at what you know now if you're a real estate investor that's great but I don't expect you to have the knowledge that I have after 20 years of doing this every single day that's many many 10,000 hours in place here and that's why people work with me and people like myself because we actually understand the market really well <clears throat> oh, somebody passed King Street or something. Okay. So, <clears throat> there are opportunities. They may not be so easy for you to see because if you're not in it day in, day out, you may not realize you're looking at an amazing deal. Or you may look at something that's completely overpriced. Either way, Josie Kaplan, give me a call.